Hi besties. This video is going to be super late again. Um, I'm waiting to do an interview for something very exciting um, in like less than an hour. But I'm going to film this while I wait to keep my mind off of it and because this needs to be done. So cheers. Let's talk about everything I watched in April. I don't have that many things. I think I only have three like brand new things that are going to be added to our tier list. But nonetheless, things that I do indeed want to talk about. So... First thing I watched in April was this Netflix miniseries called Behind Her Eyes. My mom and my grandma watched this and they were like dead set on like trying to get me to watch this because they thought I would really like it. I did like it. I can't really tell y'all much about this series without like giving a lot away, but it's basically about this, it takes place in England. It's about this woman who becomes like a secretary for this like business dude and like starts having an affair with him, but then... She also befriends the guy's wife, and there's just, like, weird stuff going on. Like, something's up with, like, the wife, and, like, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, so I did- it was a bit difficult for me to, like, get into this. Like, I wasn't, like, super into it for a while. I was kind of confused on where it was going. However, I loved the ending. Like, I liked the sort of twist at the end. I thought it was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed it. It gave me, um, sort of Us vibes, like the end of Us. That was sort of the energy that the end of the show gave me, and so I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really fun. But yeah, with that being said, I did- I feel like I went in with high expectations because my grandma and my mom were, like, really trying to get me to watch this, but I- but I think it's, like, a solid B. Like, I think I would put it- mm, like, I think I would put it, like, here, which is not bad at all. Like, it was, like, a good show. And I was, like, intrigued. I, like, wanted to know what was happening. You know this if you follow me on Instagram, but I did, in fact, finish The Secret History. It is still my entire personality, probably will be my entire personality for a hot minute. I don't have enough good things to say about The Secret History. It's one of the greatest books ever written. It's so fucking good. I have a billion and one video ideas for The Secret History, so don't worry. Don't worry, content is coming, especially considering Pride Month is right around the corner. I do have plans for some stuff to do for Pride Month. There will be Secret History content in that Pride Month array. Um, I decided that I'm not going to rank this because it's not fair. It's not fair to everything else on this list because obviously this would be number one and it would stay there all year. Also, I don't know how many other books I'm going to get around to reading this year, so I feel like we're just going to keep it to like visual media, so TV and movies, but... If you haven't read The Secret History by Miss Donna's Heart and you're a Goldfinch fan, you're not a Goldfinch fan, whatever. What could possibly be happening here? Okay, I watched them on Amazon Prime. This was, like, this was a hot minute ago. It's been a hot minute since the beginning of April when I watched these things. I... Okay, I don't quite know how to approach talking about this show because this show has been quite controversial with a lot of people. Um, it's basically this horror miniseries based on a true story about this black family in the 40s. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it the 40s? Um, that they move into this all-white town. They move into Compton. This show was incredibly scary and violent um and like incredibly violent like one of the most violent things I have ever watched and I'm usually not that bothered by violence but the fifth episode of this show like the first 20 minutes of the fifth episode the little backstory bit if you've seen the show and you know what I'm talking about I have never been so horrified by like as an act of like media violence ever in my life. I felt, like, physically ill after watching it, and I had to turn it off for a while, um, because it really, really upset me. Uh, and I know the Black community seems to be very torn about this show. What I've seen on Twitter, a lot of people are saying, like, this show is great. Um, I think that this is the kind of media that we need to be pushing because it shows, like, the harsh realities of what Black people face and, like, you know, history of racism. But then a lot of people are saying that it's 
just that it's more that it's doing more harm than good by the way certain things are portrayed. I, as a white person, don't have the merit to say what what I think about that subject. I think it's definitely something that we as a society should discuss. Um, but looking at it objectively, I liked the first half of this show a lot. I was really, like, enjoying it. Like, as a fan of horror, I think there were a lot of, like, Haunting of Hill House elements in some of the, some of the filmmaking. Um, and I thought it was really intriguing. And, like I said, the cinematography was very good. And I thought it was very scary. Um, the second half lost me a little bit. It got a bit chaotic. And I sort of, like, disassociated and, like, didn't really understand what was happening. I definitely understand where people's criticism comes from as sort of an objective viewer watching it as sort of like a Jordan Peele-esque like horror media piece about racism and seeing it like as a piece of entertainment. I was very entertained by it in the first half. We got to that bit that really upset me in episode five. I sort of started to disassociate after that because I was sort of really like traumatized by that and then that's sort of when the story started to falter a bit. But yeah, I don't really have much else to say about it other than that. Um, I would love to hear, if you guys have seen this, what you think and what your sort of stance is on it, like, on it societally. Because like I said, like some people were just very, very upset that this exists, that this is a show um, that was supposedly pushed a lot to white people, which would make sense because I saw a lot of coverage about this show, like when it was... But, like, when it came out, like, it was being advertised to me a lot. And I think that that's interesting. Sort of, yeah, trying to rope in a lot of this sort of Jordan Peele horror fan base, which includes a lot of white people. So, I, yeah, definitely something to, definitely something to think about. Um, that being said, I think it's only fair to put it in C as something sort of neutral. Shameless finished in April. We're not going to talk about it. I've already talked about it. I documented me watching the, like, 11th season. I, like, did a little review after some of the episodes each week on my second channel. And then I did a reaction to the finale. I think that was on my main channel, which is just me crying for, like, an hour. Um, we got, but <laughs> we got the deleted scene of the fucking Ian and Mickey camo kiss yesterday. So I can die happy I'm okay now. <laughs> um, but... I've said my piece on how much I love Shameless and how much it's changed my life. Now that I think about it, I feel like it should be on this tier list, even though I put it on the tier list last year because, like, season 11 started late last year. It should technically still be on here. If I remember, I will go at it so for next month I can put it on, but it's it's definitely, like, at the top of A somewhere around here. A is fucking stacked, so I don't know where exactly it would go, but I really did enjoy season 11. Um... I'm very sad it's over, but it was time. It was time. It's okay. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. It's it's fine. I'm fine. Okay, and lastly, I like randomly watched this movie because this I this movie was like all over my TikTok for you page and I was just like so like I was just like so intrigued by it, I guess. I watched Spontaneous. I'm like shocked at how much I actually loved this movie. <laughs> like I went into this because like everybody on my For You page was making fun of this movie as a concept. Because it's basically like a teen rom-com, like very like John Green-esque, right? Like one of those, but about these like high school seniors. But then like randomly, like people just start spontaneously combusting. <laughs> like, hear me out. So, it had this whole, like, overarching message about, like, existentialism and about how life is short and, like, whatever, and it's, like, a teen rom-com, and I was like, that sounds so stupid, and I loved it. <laughs> like, it was actually, like, really well done. I thought that, like, even though, like, the concept is kind of stupid, like, they took it pretty seriously because people were still, you know, because these teenagers were just, like, exploding and dying, and it was very gory, like, the, like, the special effects were done really well. Well, it was very like finale if I'm not okay with this kind of energy and I really enjoyed that. Um it was Catherine Langford and the guy from Looking for Alaska. He was really good. I really liked his character. I thought he was really sweet. The protagonist was very much like the I'm not like other girls type and like wasn't vibing with her. But the story was good enough that I didn't care. Like normally if I was watching a movie like this, I would have like checked out just because I thought the protagonist was annoying. And pretentious but like 
kind of slapped. And, like, I was looking into, like, reviews of it, and a lot of people think the same thing. They're like, this movie did not have to go so hard, and it kind of did, though. Like, this is kind of, like, a good modern ro- teen rom-com. So, yeah, but that being said, like, it slapped. Like, why do I want to put it at the top of B right now? Why is that here right now? Go watch it. It was on Hulu, bro. If anybody's seen this movie, because it literally, apparently, was, like, only on my For You page and nobody else's, but... If anyone else has seen this, let me know. Because, like, kind of slapped. All right. That concludes April recap. Like I said, not many things to talk about, but some substantial things nonetheless. So I will see you next month when I do my May recap, because I definitely have some exciting things to talk about in May. Um, Yeah, videos are coming. Sis is very busy. Sis works, like, six days a week. Today's my day off, so today I'm catching up on YouTube stuff, um, and that's just how it goes. Uh, It's definitely a shift from ha- from being, like, a full-time YouTuber the past year, because we were in a pandemic and I was stuck at my house. So with that being said, comment, like, and subscribe, press the notification bell, because I don't have an uploading schedule. Like I said, Pride Month videos are coming, making some plans, that's gonna be fun, we're gonna do some similar stuff that we did last year, which is, like, talking about different, like, charities and stuff to benefit LGBTQ+, people, and youth, specifically. Follow me on Instagram, links in my description to my social media, my merch, my website, my second channel, I've reopened my Etsy shop, I am working on a lot of new Bunkos. Um, But yeah, this has been a really great dinner. Thanks for coming over.